teaching and observing, catechetical services in the Lutheran Church. The diocese has begun the task of developing a new set of church order, church order and liturgical resources for our professional Lutheran congregations. And part of that work includes the formulation of a catechetical service that is modeled after the orthodox practice and tradition of the Lutheran Fathers who have gone before us. This paper is offered as part of the work to be done by the catechetical and liturgical committees for our fellowship as we look forward to submitting to the church an order of service that emphasizes the chief parts of Christian doctrine according to Luther's catechisms and reminds all the saints that worship and teaching are inextricably connected. This paper will review principles and examples for catechetical services from our Reformation Fathers from the 16th century, and it will then discuss some models for services from the period of liturgical development in America around the end of the 19th century. The purpose of reviewing these materials is to offer information and analysis for the work of our own committees as we endeavor to submit a form of catechetical service for the 21st century that is faithful to our Lord's Word, our Lutheran confessions, and the historical practice of the Church that has already served us well through the previous centuries. Principles from the Reformation. The practice of explicit instruction in the essential parts of Christian faith and doctrine in the context of worship has always been a part of the Reformation. This makes sense because the Reformation came about as men simply were trying to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ's instruction to the church. We always must come back to our Savior's words from Matthew 28. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all, all the nations, <coughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From as early as 1516, Dr. Luther was preaching sermons on the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the Creed. Luther was not the first to rely on these summaries of divine teaching, but he was applying the received historic use of such parts to remind hearers in the church of foundational ideas. The Reformation relied on God's holy truth purge out the corruptions of the Roman Church, but the reforms left openings and needs for which the faithful teachers had to provide. The worship services of the Church had to be repaired, stripping away ungodly superstitions and doctrines of righteousness through man's works, with right, te right teaching and faithful practice restored for the gathering of the saints. Luther's German Mass and Order of Service in 1526 was clear about the importance of catechetical instruction in worship. Such orders are essential, especially for the immature and the young, who must be trained and educated in the Scripture and God's Word daily so that they may become familiar with the Bible, grounded, well-versed, and skilled in it, ready to defend their faith and in due time to teach others to increase the kingdom of Christ. When Luther began to give specific direction for orders of service, he is direct and to the point about catechesis. First, the German service needs a plain and simple, fair and square catechism. Catechism means the instruction in which the heathen, which the heathen who want to be Christians are taught and guided in what they should believe know, do, and leave undone, according to the Christian faith. This instruction or catechization I cannot put better or more plainly than has been done from the beginning of Christendom and retained till now, that is, in these three parts, the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Our Father. These three plainly and briefly contain exactly everything that a Christian needs to know. This instruction must be given from the pulpit at stated times or daily as may be needed and repeated or read aloud evenings and mornings in the homes 
for the children and servants in order to train them as Christians. By his own admission, Dr. Luther is not the one who came up with these guiding principles, but his statement of them has an obvious influence on the faithful endeavors which follow. His instructions for German orders of service also include weekday services, especially for the sake of schools. Namely, on Monday and Tuesday mornings, we have a German lesson on the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, Baptism, and Sacrament, so that these two days preserve and deepen, deepen the understanding of the Catechism. Such services are not just for students of schools and institutions, but, quote, for the benefit of any layman who might be present and listening as well. Also concerning these German services, and in his previous work on the order of Mass, he advises that boys should be taught to recite the psalms and lessons in worship. Luther is not advocating, advocating for laity taking parts of worship that properly belong to the office of ministry, but he was giving an example of the catechetical elements of worship rightly involved consistent use of the Psalter and public recitation. This recitation was opportunity for the young to confess the faith that they are learning, but it also served to remind and strengthen the rest of the flock who were gathering. Prior to the publication of Luther's monumental small and large catechisms, the work of the Reformation addressed the need to visit and advise the pastors and congregations in Saxony. Dr. Luther's reaction to the unfortunate state of Christian education in that time and place is well known from this preface to this small catechism. However, the guidance that he and Melanchthon gave to these churches encouraged the same focus on restoring right teaching and practice even before Luther's catechetical resources were available. Since the servants and young people come to church in the afternoon, we recommend that on Sunday afternoons there be constant repetition through preaching and exposition of the Ten Commandments, the Articles of the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. If on Sundays we preach on the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the Creed, one after the other, we should also diligently preach about marriage and the sacraments of baptism and of the altar. In such preaching, we should spell out word for word the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the Articles of the Creed for the sake of the children and other simple, unschooled folk. Since this direction comes a few years after his instructions concerning the German orders of service, we can see that Luther is not insisting on a definite time and form of the catechetical service, but he is certainly consistent about the need for these elements to be part of the church's worship. Sermons that Luther preached during these years would become the large catechism. This material would serve as a companion piece for the German Mass, giving solid guidance for preachers to follow in keeping with faithful worship reforms. It would also be the best commentary on his small catechism, which appeared around the same time. Each of the catechisms had different styles and applications but both provided the church with an educational focus that would be timeless. The catechisms continued to reflect the ideas previously taught with, with the German orders of service. The small and large catechism both reminded fathers and heads of families to teach the essential parts of Christian doctrine to their children and other dependents. But both also make clear that the third commandment means the life of a Christian is always connected to the teaching and worship that takes place where the church gathers and receives the word and sacraments and worship. The large catechism, paragraph 89. And indeed, we Christians ought always to keep such a Sabbath and to be occupied with nothing but holy things, that is, daily to meditate upon God's word and carry it in our hearts and upon our lips. We must devote several hours a week to the young, or at least a day to the mass of people, in order that we may be concerned about this alone, 
and especially urge the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and thus direct our whole life and being according to God's Word. In the years that followed, the Church's efforts to uphold the idea of constant teaching in the home and also by recitation and instruction in worship services were carried, carried out in various ways. The 1569 church order for Braunschweig, um, Wolfenburg, um, for Martin Chemnitz and Jacob Andrea, provides a valuable model for how the principles of the Reformation continue to be employed. The good order and uniform ceremonies that were given show various applications of Luther's ideas for catechesis and worship. Various services were prescribed for the parishes in the cities and in the villages, but in both contexts and in most of the appointed services, some form of catechetical preaching, instruction, or recitation is included in the orders. Matins and Vespers were opportunities to have the children sing psalms and recite the chief parts of the catechism. Sunday afternoon was given as a time to preach and teach on Luther's catechism, indicating that such instruction needed to happen at least one day each week. Quote, but if on account of other tasks, preachers do not have time to preach the catechism on Sunday, it shall be done on a weekday. These church, church orders also continue to highlight the catechetical duties of the family as well. Quote, and each house father shall be responsible for sending his children both boys and girls who are of age, to this sermon. Maid servants and men servants shall also attend and be supported in doing so by the lords and ladies of their house. As with Luther's various instructions on how to bring specifically catechetical teaching into worship services, order gives several options for implementation. However, it is also unmistakably clear about the value and need for it. The people shall be continually urged to come back to the church to hear the catechism read and treated. But if for some reason this is impossible, a section of Luther's small catechism shall be read to them word for word every Sunday after the sermon and before communion. And understand, however, these Reformation examples do not overlook that concern. The question and answer sessions that are prescribed by Luther and Chemnitz give the pastor occasion to help each student as needed. Also, as previously noted, both give clear indication that teaching and examination should be done in Christian homes, where parents are especially well equipped to nurture the individual needs of learners. These parents lack in their own understanding of the church's doctrine. The frequent preaching, teaching, and recitation in worship endeavors to give them the knowledge for fulfilling their part of the whole harmonious process. From the principles of the reformers, it is clear there are components that ought to be regular parts of catechesis in services, classrooms, and homes alike. Singing or reading the Psalms from Holy Script Scripture and singing hymns are valuable devotional habits. Understanding and attending worship with the gathered saints of the church must be part of the catechumen's discipline. If one truly desires to properly believe and receive the holy sacraments, one cannot be careless about the services where God gives these gifts. Lastly, and obviously, recitation and instruction with the pastors of the church must take place in good order. Luther's preface to the small catechism gives clear instruction for this. The Lutherans would continue to uphold this in one form or another throughout the following centuries. <clears throat> Examples from the period of Lutheran liturgical development in America. Our diocese is not only part of the tradition of the Reformation, it is also obviously part of Lutheranism in America. Liturgical developments in the 19th and 20th centuries shaped our current observances. 
In some cases, those events have also left work for us to do in repairing worship practices in our own time. Catechetical services seem to have fallen into obscurity. As part of this paper's analysis of resources, two examples from that period of Lutheran practice in America will be considered. The first example is from the Church Liturgy for Evangelical Lutheran Congregations, the Unaltered Oxford Confession, published by Concordia Publishing House for the German Evangelical Lutheran Synod of Missouri, Ohio, and other states. Um, at the end of this, attached as appendices are photocopies of the pages relevant to the Missouri Synod order and the Galea order that, that we'll talk about after that. So um, those are attached at the end. This model given in the Missouri Synod's liturgical orders reflects a shift away from the older catechetical service forms. Their order of catechetical instruction begins. Catechetical instruction is held in the afternoon instead of a service with preaching. It ought to be held carefully and industriously, not only for children who go to school and those about to be confirmed, but also for confirmed persons of every age. The structure is formal, and it does uphold essential elements that were commended in services from the Reformation period. The order opens with a hymn and proceeds with, quote, loud recitation of the text of the Catechism by the children while standing. The students recite the Ten Commandments, the three articles of the Holy Christian faith, the separate petitions of the Lord's Prayer, and the scripture text pertaining to holy baptism, the office of the keys, and the sacrament of the altar. Then the directions continue. Quote, Hereupon the children sit down, and two boys step forward toward the altar, the one to the right and the other to the left, facing each other, and recite a whole part of the catechism at a time by questioning and answering in manner as follows. At this point, the boys recite the content of Luther's small catechism. After this recitation, the order says a hymn is to be sung, at the close of which the minister again steps forward to the altar, facing the congregation, says a brief prayer ex corde, and then holds an examination, not exceeding three quarters of an hour. Following the examination, the order is concluded with the antiphony, collect, and benediction, and the catechetical instruction is closed with the closing verse and a mental prayer. So some elements of a liturgical service are maintained, but the overall manner of the instruction is more like a formal classroom setting. The order does well to emphasize the importance of ongoing catechesis for all members of the church. It also rightly preserves the use of hymnody, prayer, and recitation with the catechetical instruction. In spite of being observed in proximity to the altar, it is quite different from a catechetical worship service, but such intention was stated in the first sentence of the order. The other example is contemporary with the Missouri Synod's order, the Liturgy for Christian Congregations of the Lutheran Faith, composed by Wilhelm Lea, provides ecclesiastical guidance similar to that of the Missouri Synod's, but it is explicitly an order of service and it retains elements that are consistent with the instructions of the Reformation teachers. The order of service for catechization starts with these instructions. The service begins with a hymn suitable to the part of the catechism to be studied. During the last stanza, the minister approaches the altar and reads, whenever possible, alternately with the congregation, one of the following psalms, 119.34. 119 verses 1 through 19. It continues with the liturgical salutation and three possible collects, followed by recitation of the essential parts of the catechism. After corporate recitation, quote, two boys then come to the entrance of the chancel, somewhere near the front, so that they may be easily seen and heard by the congregation. They then ask and recite alternately one of the five, one, one of the parts 
of the small catechism together with Luther's explanation. On high festivals, the questions of Rosinus or Belinus shall be asked and answered in similar manner. The service proceed, proceeds with suitable hand. Quote, the catechist then takes up part of the catechism and begins to catechize not only the children and those to be confirmed, but also the older and matured members of, of the congregation. Adults shall not be forbidden to ask questions, state doubts, or whatever may trouble them, so that the minister may encourage or warn them as need may require. Leah preserves the practice of including the other communicant, but he also gives fair notice that the minister is to respond to their participation with due application of the gospel and the law. He also says, when catechization has been completed, the minister, according to circumstances, admonishes obedience to the truth. The order of service continues with a specific prayer composed for the children, the Lord's Prayer, pray together, the use of the prayer bell, a hymn, proper liturgical sentences, the salutation and another collect, another salutation, the benedicamus, and finally the benediction. This structure has some similarities with matins and vespers, and it is clearly composed for the purpose of formal worship. In addition to these two examples of orders for catechization, the Norwegian Lutherans also deserve mention. Around this same period, English hymnals from the Norwegians contain rubrics for the main morning service that allow for catechization. Christian Hymns for Church, School, and Home, published in 1898, indicates that if there be no communion, catechization takes place after the sermon and offering. Similarly, the Lutheran Hymnary, published in 1926, also has a rubric in the same part of the morning service, which says, the catechization of the young may here take place. This shall begin and close with appropriate hymns. These allowances reflect an admirable continuity with the practice that was prescribed by Lutheran covenants. Examples for modern use in our fellowship. Within our own fellowship, there are also two examples of catechetical orders in use that reflect our modern commitment to the principles of the Orthodox Fathers and their teachings. Um, also to flag the footnote, apology there. Um, if there are any, uh, any in our fellowship who have developed other catechetical services, please know I, I intend no offense if I've overlooked your work purposes of this paper, I've used those orders of which I am aware, and if there are others available in our diocese, please be sure to let our committees know. So, like I said, it's like, if any of you are, are doing something that doesn't get mentioned in here, it's like, like I didn't mean this as a slide, it's just I, I went with, it's like, what I knew, and so definitely uh, um, let us know if, if you've got something going on, so. Um, Um, Pastor Stefanski and the Saints from Holy Trinity in Arkansas have shared with us an order for the recitation of the small catechism for occasions on which the pastor is unavailable. This order upholds Reformation practices and principles for catechization, for catechizing the saints through recitation, hymns, and prayers, but it also maintains proper regard for the office of the ministry. The order of recitation is led by one who holds a lay office in the congregation and is careful not to adopt parts of worship that properly belong to responsibilities of the clergy. The gathering and recitation of the catechism is done in the context of the church's worship schedule, but the order itself is an extension of what fathers ought to be doing in their Christian households anyway. The final model that this paper will consider is also the other modern exemplar from one of our parishes. Pastor Henson and Trinity Lutheran Church in Illinois have a catechetical service 
that is a regular part of their worship schedule and educational efforts. First half hour, this catechetical session is repetition and recitation of hymns, parts of Luther's small catechism and Bible verses for memorization with instruction on these parts. After that, the worship service opens with components of Vespers, including a scripture reading and hymn. The pastor then gives catechetical instruction on the sections appointed for the evening. And this is followed by responsive prayer, which includes the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Psalm. The service concludes with salutation prayers, colleagues, the Benedictimus, and the Benediction, also similar to a Vesper service. These examples are all submitted to show the value of catechesis done in the context of the church's worship. Such services do not have the same function as the familiar classroom and lecture formats that, we have come, that have come into common usage, nor should they necessarily replace those classes. Each congregation in our fellowship has different circumstances, so our committees must be conscious of these factors when making suggestions for our church orders. However, the wisdom of our church fathers from the Reformation have left us with guidance and wisdom that should not be ignored. Other studies might reveal why catechetical, catechetical services fell into obscurity and disuse, but the examples here support the point that Superintendent Chemnitz made about teaching Luther's small catechism in worship. The usefulness and necessity of this is beyond expressing. Hopefully I accurately represented the things of the guys who are in this room who can dress me down <laughs> if I was wrong. So, um, but uh, um, any, yeah, Pastor Shep. If we have a order of Okay. Um, I mean, it's we're, we're in the very preliminary stages, so I can't really speak for the work of two committees, because if you remember from the workbook, it's like, this is something that two of the three committees are supposed to collaborate on, so um, I, I wasn't trying to give any kind of indication of what's going to happen, I was just, like, wanted to kind of do something that would contribute to work in that direction. So I, I can't speak to what's going to happen, but it seems like a reasonable consideration. So. I forgot about that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anything else? 